all I wanted from the producers of Mix was just to do cross game again. That's it. That's that's all I wanted. Just do cross game again, and I would have been happy. And after the first episode, they kind of did that. Mix is a manga by legendary mangaka Adachi Mitsuru. He is one of my favorite artists of all time. I've read just about everything he's ever written. And it's becoming clear that Mix is probably going to be his last work. And because of it, Mix kind of plays like a nostalgia trip, like a collection of all of the works he's ever done. But most notably, it is a sequel to his original work, Touch, from the 80s. The manga began publishing in 2012. It's been going on for the last six years. And I was initially very excited when I heard last year that an anime adaptation would be produced for this spring. Mix would be the fourth baseball show based off a manga by Adachi Mitsuru, the first being Touch, the second being H2, which came out in the 90s, the third being Cross Game that came out in late 2000s, and this one in 2019. But as much as I was excited for this show, it didn't seem like it was getting a lot of press. All of the Twitter buzz that I saw from it was, you know, Japanese only, and that's fine. I didn't expect this show to be popular out here, but it was being advertised as not just a sequel to Touch, but as something that would only be enjoyed by people who watch Touch. Which disappoints me a bit because Touch came out in the 80s and there's a lot of anime fans right now who did not watch anything in the 80s and would not have picked up on Touch at all because it's a baseball show. It's very niche and not terribly popular over here. But Mix had an opportunity to connect itself to Cross Game, which has a modicum of popularity out here. I kind of wish they had done that. Maybe it would have been a bit more recognizable. And it's the anonymity of this show that made me worried initially that I wouldn't be able to find it on a legal streaming platform. But lo and behold, last night it was announced that Funimation would pick it up not just for a simulcast, but also a dub. And that's wild. I can think of maybe four baseball shows at all with any sort of dub. I know Princess Nine has a dub. I know the first season of Ofuri has a dub. I know at least the original Little Busters and the sequel Little Busters Refrain has a dub. Little Busters EX might have a dub. I'm not entirely sure about that. And now I guess Mix has a dub. That matters little to me because I'm not going to watch the dub. I will stick to the sub. But that it has a dub at all means that the distributors think that this could be a popular show. And that's, that's pretty wild to me because it doesn't seem as if it could be based off of all of the Twitter reception that I've been reading. But from the beginning of the first episode, it becomes pretty clear that the marketing towards the Touch Nostalgia audience was very much in line with the pacing of this show. The episode begins kind of where the Touch series left off. You see the main character from that show, Uesugi Tatsuya, strike out his final batter in the final game of the 68th Koshin in 1986. This story takes place 30 years later in 2016, I guess. And here is where we start afresh in the same universe, in the same town, but with different characters. Our two mains are Tachibana, Soichiro, and Doma, who are brothers that were born on the same day but are not related by blood. Soichiro's dad and Toma's mom get together after something happens with each of their partners. It's not clear in the show, and having read the manga, it's not entirely clear in the manga either what happened to them. But it's that typical Adachi thing where they're twins, but there's kind of a twist to their twinship. In the first episode, we also get introduced to their parents, and Soichiro's little sister Otomi, who also serves as Toma's little sister, though not related by blood. It's kind of a confusing mess, and because of the confusion of the family construction, this episode utilizes a narrator. But this isn't just some generic narrator that they just pulled off the heap. This is a voice that I actually recognized, which is crazy because I don't pay attention to voice actors whatsoever. 
The narrator in this case is Hidaka Noriko, and if you don't recognize the name, that's okay, because I didn't either. But I definitely recognized the voice, and after a Google search, I realized that she was the voice of Asakura Minami, who is the lead character in Touch, or at least the lead heroine. I read a news brief that said that she would be involved in some capacity in the show, but it kind of blew me away that they chose to use her as a narrator. Not just that they decided to use her, but that they decided to use a narrator at all. There's no narrator in touch. There's no narrator in H2. There's very brief moments of narration in Cross Game, but the narration comes from the main character. This is a third person omniscient narrator, however, and that's kind of surprising. The rest of the episode is panel by panel, the first chapter of Mix. And in some ways that's cool because I get to relive the manga reading experience, but in other ways it's kind of not creative. The reason why the first episode of Cross Game is so good is because the creators realized that they couldn't follow the two chapters per episode rule, at least in the beginning, and come up with a satisfying introduction. So what they did was they compressed the entire first volume, 10 chapters, into one episode, into this one really hard-hitting first episode. And this show doesn't do that. This show wants to be very true to its source material. And the trouble with that is... Adachi stories start out really slowly all the time, and I'm worried that this isn't going to gain a following because the first episode isn't as hard-hitting as Cross Game was. That doesn't really impact my enjoyment of the show, but if my ultimate goal is for this show to continue past this first season, I want it to get as much steam and as much critical favor as possible. And I just don't know if the first episode is going to appeal to a normie crowd that may not be into Adachi or may not be into sports anime. And I did have one other problem with this first episode. If you watch Cross Game, the first thing that I really notice is how bright the colors are, how much the color palette pops. Mix doesn't have those same bright colors. Mix looks very autumnal. Mix looks more realistic. The design choice looks a lot more like H2 than it does Cross Game. And that's too bad because I think Cross Game looks a little brighter, a little fresher than H2 does. And this may be more true to life, but it's also just not as visually appealing. There's not much that distinguishes it from its predecessors. If the creators are going to stay true to the source material, I really hope they actually do that. The last shot of this episode is the only thing that diverges from the first chapter of the manga. In the first chapter of the manga, we see Otomi getting a dog. At the end of the first episode of Mix, however, we see Otomi cleaning out a storage space at the cafe where she works, and she uncovers a relic, which turns out to be Tatsuya's jersey. I'm guessing because it has the Meisei on the front and the number one on the back. But that doesn't show up in the manga at all. Which means that I guess the producers have some leeway to make creative changes. But it seems like this specific creative change was kind of to throw a bone at the audience that is here only because they love Touch so much. Which does include me, so I was a bit giddy at that ending, and hopeful that maybe more bones would be thrown my way. And yes, I definitely like this show so far more than most baseball shows, just because of its creative direction and its tone. But I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't at least a little bit underwhelmed by its presentation. It is just the first episode, it may get better, and I'm really hoping it does. So yeah, first episode of Mix, I kind of have a better idea of what to expect as this show goes forward. I really don't know how long this show is going to last. There is an indefinite number of episodes that have been published on my anime list. It may be that this show stops after one season. It may be that it gets more. My biggest concern with the length of this show is that if they stick by a two chapters per episode rule, that means that we probably get at least three full seasons of this show before it catches up to where the manga is right now. But if they follow what they did in the first episode and give each episode only one chapter, that 
gives us 80 episodes of this show, but theoretically 80 episodes of this show, because I don't really know if this show has the strength to last for 80 episodes. So in that case, I don't really know what I want. I'm afraid that if they go too quickly, they might catch up with the manga, which doesn't even seem halfway done. And if they go too slowly, they risk being boring and losing out on an audience. I guess the only way to know for sure is to see. And to check back next week. When I do episode 2. Yeah. <laughs>